OK, now we're going to start looking at differentiating parametric equations. Parametric equations are when instead of having y is equal to 3x plus 1, or y is equal to 4x squared, etc., we've got both y and x in terms of t. So if we wanted to actually draw this curve out, we'd need to stick in t is 1 to both of them and draw the point, t is 2 to both of them and draw the point, and then gradually we'll be able to draw all the way through the curve. How do we go about differentiating it? Well, we can use the fact that dy by dx is equal to dy by dt over dx by dt. Now, if we want to prove this, we could just remember that dividing by a fraction is exactly the same as flipping the second one upside down. We then cross out both the dt's and we end up with dy over dx. So, find the gradient of the point P of the curve given parametrically by y is equal to t squared plus 1 and x is equal to t cubed plus 1. So to start off with, we need to differentiate both of them with respect to t. Firstly, dy by dt. Differentiate exactly the same, except we've got a t over here instead of an x. So dy by dt is equal to 2t. dx by dt is going to be equal to 3t squared. Now, from our formula up here, we can work out that dy by dx of this curve at any point is going to be dy by dt over dx by dt. So let's do that now. dy by dt is 2t, and dx by dt is 3t squared. And finally, we need to answer the question that asks us uh, to find out this point uh, at point t is equal to 2. So we're going to stick in t is equal to 2, and we end up with dy by dx is equal to 2 times 2 over 3 times 2 squared, which is all eventually equal to a third. Now, normally when we differentiate something, we've got something nice and easy that's y equals 3x squared, which we can differentiate, and we end up with dy by dx equals something to do with x. But what about this case here, where we can't actually rearrange, so we get y equals something, and then differentiate? What do we do there? We're going to be doing something called finding an implicit relationship. First of all, let's have a chat about differentiating things to do with y's instead of things to do with x's. If I differentiate y squared, it's exactly the same as it would be if it was an x. So y squared turns into 2x times by dy by dx. The difference of y squared is, two, is 2y dy by dx. What's the differential of y cubed? The differential of y cubed 3y squared times by dy by dx. So this means that we may also need to use the product rule as well. So for example, something like finding the differential of x squared y cubed. So these two things are both multiplying each other. Now if you remember the product rule, we, that's going to be equal to the differential of this times by this left alone, plus the differential of this, times by this left alone. Now the differential of this is quite easy, it's just 2x, exactly the same as normal. That one left alone is y cubed, plus the differential of this is now going to be 3y squared, but also times by dy by dx, times by that one left alone. OK, another implicit relationship question. Find the gradient of the curve x squared plus y cubed equals 4x at the point 1, 2. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just differentiate all the way through, uh, exactly as normal. We're then going to rearrange until we get dy by dx is equal to something. So differentiating straight through by x, we end up with 2x, as we would normally. The differential of this is 3y squared 
times by dy by dx, and that's equal to differential of 4x is just equal to 4 as it would be normally. Now we need to rearrange all of this till we get just dy by dx by itself. So we're going to stick the 2x over there. 3y squared dy by dx is equal to 4 minus 2x. Then we divide 3 by the 3y squared. And we end up with dy by dx equals 4 minus 2x all over 3y squared like so. Now, if we want to find out the actual value of that at the point 1, 2, then we need to stick in x is 1 and x is 2. Now, remember that normally when we do dy by dx and we find out the gradient of something, we would actually just stick in the x bit, and now we're sticking both the x bit and also the y bit. So if we stick in x is 1 in here and y is 2 down there, we're going to end up with eventually dy by dx at that point is equal to 1, 6. Right, now we've found out how to use implicit relationships, it means that we can differentiate something like y is equal to 2 to the power of x. So when we've got powers, before we couldn't work out what dy by dx is, so we couldn't find out the gradient, but now we can. Okay, if y is equal to 2 to the power of x, there's uh, always the same trick whenever we've got powers. Always start off by taking logs to both sides. So we're going to end up with the ln of y is equal to the ln of 2 to the power of x. Now that means that I can drop that power down from the rule of law, from the laws of logs, ending up with ln of y equals x times the ln of 2. Right, I'm going to differentiate all the way through. Now, the differential of ln of x is 1 over x. So that means the differential of ln of y is going to be 1 over y. And don't forget about the dy by dx as well. That's going to be equal to ln of 2. Now remember that ln of 2 is just a number, so if you're differentiating 3x, differential of 3x is just 3. Exactly the same if you've got ln of 2, which is a number, times by x, differential of that is just going to be the number ln of 2 straight away. Okay, so we now need to rearrange if we want to get dy by dx all by itself, so we're going to stick dy by dx by itself, and we're going to put that y all the way up there, at which point we now say, well actually remember, y was actually equal to 2 to the power x. So let's stick that back in and we end up with dy by dx is equal to 2 to the power x times by the ln of 2. And this trick will work for anything that's power. And in general, for example, if you've got y is equal to 3 to the power x, then dy by dx is going to turn out to be ln of 3 times by 3 to the power of x. And exactly the same if it was y equals 4 to the power of x. Mm -hmm.